Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to the channel. If you remember this job behind me, we were doing a bathroom office addition inside of a building that we completed previously. And since we've been gone, the plumber electrician have been here. So I'm gonna show you what they've done and what we're gonna work on today. So here is the bathroom and you can see all the work that has been done here. We've got a shower that has been it's kind of dark in here. Sorry about that, but I think you get the idea. We've got all this prep for finishes now. So what we're gonna be doing is install this, this is a 5 8 fur siding, you know, just for a different look instead of just like a drywall or a sheet good. This is what we're going to be installing inside the bathroom. Greg is going around and making sure that we've got all of our blocking. Over here in this office area, we're going to be running a wainscoat around the bottom. And then we're going to be running that same fur siding from this point up and our ceilings are going to be black steel ceilings. So what we're going to try to do today is just wrap up this um, the bathroom siding, get that stuff on. We're not gonna be trimming it out today. We're not gonna be hanging doors. And then we're gonna get measurements for our steel ceiling. I wanna make sure I've got all the right dimensions. But for now, let's get started on this uh, Doug Fur exterior siding. So I had something show up from Festool and I feel pretty cool and pretty privileged about that. And that is the brand new TSC 55K. And if you guys follow the channel, you know that we love our HKC 55 which we love it, but we always thought it was just slightly underpowered and had a couple nuances, but check it out. Festool just released this new track saw, which you cannot hate Festool for their track saws. They make great track saws. Now I'm not gonna go into a full unboxing just yet. I just got this, I wanna use it, and then I'll talk about it. So what I'm doing today is ripping down some sheet goods and what obviously a better way to use it than to rip down sheet goods. This thing has got so much more power than our HKC. I mean, it's not an HKC, it's a, oh, thank you. You just put that right over top of me. <laughs> it's not an HKC, therefore it's not made to go on our HKC track. So hopefully they come out with that next. It's not an HKC, so I won't work on our little like. That's a TSC. Okay, now what I need though, we need a little, uh, we need something to make sure we're not too tall like a little ladder or something to go up. Yeah. And I need to mark these stud locations on the floor yep. so I know where they're all at. Uh. <gasps> oh, buddy, that about smashed my camera, dude. But it didn't, so no crying over non-spilt milk. All right, let's go ahead and do the old better safe than sorry laser check. I like it. Can I say I love it, I think? Looks like a bag of money going up this wall. Give me a little more. Right there. I got enough off, dude. Let's give it a whirl. I think you did. It's hard to say. About a foot. Yeah, it's about, about cool. 10 inches. Yeah, that's what I'd say. Okay, six and an eighth to nine inches. Six and one eighth to nine inches. And then I need something long and straight, like a straight edge, like a piece of wood or something. I just need to like go across. Actually, this works out really good because I can go down till it's tight. I'll make a mark. And then that's where the top of our corner will be, which is say 92 and 3 eighths. Yes. And then that's where the rounded top will start with our bit. Okay, that's top. Okay. Let's see, we gotta make sure we don't hit the pipe. Anything else we got in the way? No, not really. Is there something in the way or is it just the flexing of the... I think it's just the flexing. Okay, go ahead and take it up. I see the problem and I actually saw it down there. This bottom has like a little bit of a tail out underneath the 
thing. So let's just see what we're sitting. I know it doesn't matter a ton. <laughs> well, it does. It's almost like we need to cut this bottom, which I can see it. The tail, like the tongue of this guy is three quarters. Oh, dude, you're not even five eighths. It's like seven, nine sixteenths. Here's what I need to do, and I can do it pretty easily. Just pull it out. Good Lord. I don't know why we're trying to be this precise, though. Here, lean it your way as much as you can. I mean, that's a ton better, dude. Okay. Here. Let's take this. Grab it level. Let's grab it. Yep. And then we'll use it as our template for the full sheet. This should fit in here without needing to do anything. Okay. So now if we do this. Why is it not going in there? Oh, freaking nail. Freaking nail, dude. I think that's it. So we'll have to just transfer that. All right, what's the, what's the measurement to the center of the next uh, stud? All right. All right, now here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna kind of lift it up and take it in and I'm gonna lift it up. We gotta get holes in and stuff. Yeah, yeah freaking tight. Yeah, that's too tight. We need to... No, I think we just need to straighten out. You think? It's pretty tight, bro. I think we just need to straighten out. Finger, fingers, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> okay, now let that off just a little bit. That I can live with and that all looks good. A lot better than it did. Oh man, so much better than we're a team, man. We're a team, dude. <laughs> Wait, should I wait? Or what? We can get through there? Oh my You think I can get out? You got out with your tool belt on? I had no issues. Alright, this is about impossible to film the interior here while you're working, so sorry about that. Turned out pretty good. Did a pretty good job on all of our penetrations. Should be easy for plumber and electrician to clean everything up. And we'll come back when our steel is in. We'll get our steel ceiling installed. We like doing it this way, just because it seems to be a little bit easier. So it's super hard in these little tiny areas to show you guys what we're doing, but I'll kind of give you the lowdown. We're, Greg just got done putting the base trim down at the bottom. So we're gonna run Wayne's coat. There's gonna be a black metal Wayne's coat. That's what this nailer here is for, going around. And then from there up is gonna be the same plywood. I think it'll be a good finish once it's all done. Uh, we've got lots of outlets to cut around. And what I'm doing now is running, I don't know if you can see it, a, we have to run one buys. Really, only because we're running the metal Wayne's coat, we wouldn't have to run the one buys with the 16 on it center studs and using that plywood. But since we're running a metal Wayne's coat, we've got to run some horizontal framing for the steel. Then we've also got to match the steel, or sorry, the dimension of the framing up above it for the plywood. So kind of stinks in that aspect, but it, it makes everything level and a lot easier to trim out like the doors and stuff at the, you know, at the end of it. So uh, that's what I'm doing. I'm running the framing around so that we can get on the same plane. Mm-hmm. What? I just blew right through that. 
Dang it, dude. So I'm just using the uh, 300G and I'm just giving myself a line laser level line here. And I'm just taking the base or this uh, wainscot top trim right to it, right at this crease. And it's just an easy way to quickly do this without having to use the receiver or snap lines or anything. So it kind of takes the guesswork out of it. Nice. Dang, dude, that sucker's sitting beauty. So now what I was able to do here was because these are four foot panels, this is a four foot window, I was able to run this piece into the window and then save myself a whole bunch of this, you know, basically gold because lumber is so high priced by just getting the cutoff rips and cutting it down to a top and bottom piece. And then I'll come out of this with a full four footer. So it's gonna work out pretty good, I do believe. So we'll just take this, set this up here for now. Hopefully that doesn't go anywhere. 35 and a half. getting there. And so I scribed the back side of this on this corner because my goal is going to be to uh, make a pretty clean edge here. But in order to do that, I can't just go off a of measurement. I gotta actually make it the match this corner as good as possible. And then when I put this piece over, it can lap in real nice. Hopefully, we'll see. Where'd my pads load go? So lightweight, dude. I didn't even know it was on my bag. Okay, buddy. Huh. Okay, buddy. Yeah, that didn't, dude. So I needed to get this door installed, at least rough installed, so I knew about where it was gonna be, so that I could get these trims done, so that I could put, figure out exactly where this was ending, so what my distance away from my casing was gonna be, so that I could then install this wainscot cap trim exactly where it was supposed to end and get it cut back, as well as finish this before I put my plywood up around. But it's kinda of like I can't really put the plywood up uh, without this trim and I needed the door installed so I knew exactly where it was going to be so It's not finished door. I just tacked it in there and it's about where it's going to be I know I need some minor adjustments 
Um, I need a screw in my hinge here to get this pulled back. Uh, and then I'll, I'll mess with my jams exactly, put some shims in here and get good reveals. For now, I just need to know about where it's at so I can get these trims cut back. I'm not painting the ends of these to protect them. I'm really just painting the ends because where the gaps are, I just don't want to see like wood um, or raw wood. I want to see the painted wood. Okay. Greasy. You mark this out or no? Yes. Okay. Cool, man. You good? I don't have a screw gun or a screws. I'll just hold it where you want it and then you can put a screw in it. Okay. Yeah, you're golden, dude. You ain't in all the way yet. Yeah, okay. Okay, on, now, come on in. There. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Go all the way over. I got this side. Oh, I just hit my uh, Bluetooth. You hit your Bluetooth? Okay. All right. Get this in. Got it? Yeah. I think it won't be that bad. Pull it more if you can, or no? We're like close. Okay, one second, one second. One second. Okay. Got it? Nope. Almost. Yep. Mm-hmm. You can do more than that. I think you can too. Oh, we're close, dude. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa, uh, wait. Where am I? Okay, yeah, that'll be good. That was good. Cool. Oh, um, do you have a do you have a light right here somewhere? Or no, it's in the same spot. What? It's in the same spot. Yeah, it's in the same row. Yep. Nice, that was easy. Which they can pick, they can find whichever one they want. Like as long as they know where, like, where the wires are and what bay they're in, mm -hmm. then they should be able to just cut their hole in whatever bay the one is. Mm -hmm. Reach up there and grab it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, last couple things that need to be done on this job are I've got to trim this little end cap here on the shower wall, and then I got to trim around the shower wall. You'll notice I've got all this other trim done. It was really hard to film in this area, so, um, you know, not really too detailed or needed to be, I thought, filmed. But uh, what I'm going to do here is one thing I want, and the reason I'm doing this is I wanted to touch on the fact that when you're using LP Smart Side, 
It just doesn't miter up. You can do some miters, uh, but I like to just do the square edge uh, connection. So what I do on this is I'm gonna make a piece that's gonna cap this, and then I'm gonna bring two little trim pieces back on each side just to clean off that edge, but I'm not gonna put a 45 miter on these corners. It just is not something that I like to do because through experience I've learned it doesn't work that well with the smart side. So that's just the way it is. I love this little 16 gauge angled finish nailer from Pazlo, dude. It's so lightweight, you really can't go wrong. And it does a phenomenal job. Always very consistent with a depth of drive, which when doing trim is important. How's this look? I think it looks pretty darn good. Yep. 34 and almost an eighth, and that's the last piece of trim. Okay, cool. I think that looks pretty, pretty darn good, my friend. Last thing we have to do here is install these two barn doors. Miraculously, the track has holes that are gonna line up just about perfectly with where the battens are. So as it goes across, I'll be able to mount it directly to the battens. So the first thing I need to do is mark the height of this hole location, which is the height of the door plus inch and three quarters. 84, three quarters. And I'm gonna do that right by this batten. So to ensure that it's exactly the same across both, that's why I'm using the laser and I'm marking all these right now. So now that I have all those marked, I can drill the holes and get the track hung. So I totally didn't hit the record button on that rail, no big deal, I got another one here to install. I'm gonna do the exact same process. I need to drill out these holes. So now the rails are installed. So we leave these ones, the ends off for now so that we can run our uh, stops on it. So the stops will be going over the edge. Okay, so according to the directions, which I did read the directions, what we need is a mark from the top down, five and an eighth, and in the center. So I know the center is roughly here, and this is five eighths. Now we're gonna find out the exact center of this style, which it's a four inch style. So we'll go two inches. We're gonna drill this hole. And then once I got that first one on, I'm just gonna go ahead and use my square, make sure that I'm good and square. going to kind of hand tighten those for right now and then we'll do this one over here hopefully these hang nice and can be
All right, so the next thing I need to do is I don't want this to go too far. So I'm gonna put it at my one inch right there. And then these just have a little hex guy on the top. It's just gonna tighten down. All right, now what we're gonna do is roll this open to where we like it, which I'm just gonna roll it to the opening of the jam. And then I'm gonna throw this guy on. And now that we have that, I can go ahead and install this. Nice. Nice. All right, one down, one to go. Oops. Okay. Well, that wraps up this project. It was a nice, fun one. This was a building that we completed about a year ago for this client. And ever since we did that structure, they talked about the mezzanine, this office, the bathroom. So it was kind of always in the plan. I just didn't know exactly what we were gonna do. And honestly, until we started doing it, I didn't know we were gonna be doing the smart side, the barn doors, uh, finishing the insides of the bathroom and the office. That was all kind of just added as we went. And I'm glad we were able to do it because it kind of gave us some closure on the project in, in its entirety. And before I forget, this project is actually available as a plan. So this 40 by 64 shop with the wraparound porch, it's available on my website. And I'll put a link down below in the description for the plan. There's a couple others out there as well if you're interested. The big thing is I get a lot of questions about the details, the process, how we build our buildings. Obviously I show a lot here on YouTube, but the plan actually has pictures. It has each individual detail, how we connect our trusses, how the brackets get set in concrete, where that you know measurement comes from. So all those are there. And if that's something that you're looking for, I think it's gonna help you a lot if you're gonna build a building for yourself, for another client, and you're looking to implement some of the you know strategies of how we build. But for now, I'm gonna get out of here and I'll just do a quick walk around to show you guys uh, what this looks like finished. So this is all the LP smart side siding. We've got the metal wainscot and that was so that we could just kind of tie in the existing metal wainscoting in the shop. Just for a nice quick look here. This is the interior of the shop. 40 by 64. And I know it's going to be dark in here because the electrician is is done, everything's roughed in, but it's not hooked up yet. Same with the plumbing. So we're just gonna crank up the ISO, give you guys a little bit more light. There's the interior. I'm not sure if they'll paint that vent cover. That'd be nice. And I'm sure this is gonna be way too dark, but I think you'll get the idea. Back here, the shower. Toilet, urinal. All the lighting will be um, in the ceiling will be cut out later. So there's some lights in the ceiling. And as we go into this office side over here, it's gonna be kind of the same thing. The lighting electrical is all in the ceiling and the holes will get cut out, can lights will get installed and it'll be completed. Nice little office. Smart side trims on everything just to tie it all together. I thought it was a nice touch, pre-painted, so that's nice. And this is gonna be the mechanical room. So you'll see we left this panel off. This is where all the softener and everything's gonna get hooked up and probably left open just for future service if need be. And this is a junction box because some of the wires feed in here and then go back to the main junction box. But pretty simple. Pretty clean, 